Well, he's too fast. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and other world leaders were caught on camera gossiping about Donald Trump. Now, I'm going to show you this clip, but I'm also going to discuss after the clip the fallout from this and ultimately uh, Trudeau's response as well as Trump's response and what really, um, at least on the Trump side, what this really is uh, all about. Watch. All right, so there you go. Now, clearly they were gossiping about Donald Trump. Justin Trudeau, as I'm going to get to, admits to that. Um, maybe not in those words, but they clearly were. Uh, this was during a reception at Buckingham Palace. This was caught on camera by just the, the typical cameras that are set up there. So it wasn't like a hidden camera or anything. They knew the cameras were there, which kind of makes you think, you know, there's some potential here. They were doing this on purpose. Um, also in that circle there was uh, French President Emmanuel Macron, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson, and uh, Dutch Prime Minister uh, Mark Root. Now, uh, this will give you more of an idea of what um, what was actually being said there uh, when you hear Trudeau acknowledge this. So before I get to, to Trump's response to this, here's what Trudeau said. Quote, Last night, I made a reference to the fact that there was an unscheduled press conference before my meeting with President Trump, and I was happy to take part of it. Uh, but it was certainly notable, he said. I've had a number of good conversations with the president over the course of this day and yesterday. Trudeau also revealed that when he described the surprised reaction of White House aides, he was referring to Trump's impromptu announcement that next year's G7 su uh, summit would take place at Camp David. Quote, Every different leader has teams who, every now and then, have their jaws drop at unscheduled surprises, like that video itself, for example, Trudeau said, brushing off concerns that his small talk may have endangered the prospect of a renegotiated NAFTA agreement or the broader U.S.-Canada relationship. Quote, the relationship between Canada and the U.S. is extremely strong, and I have a very good relationship with President Trump and his team, he said. So, Trudeau is an expert politician in the sense that he's able to sidestep what is obvious to everyone, that <laughs> Justin Trudeau was talking crap about Donald Trump behind his back. That's what happened. But he's able to brush it off as, oh, the normal conversations and, you know, uh, people's jaws drop on the floor all the time with all of us, not just Trump. Okay, <laughs> but let's get now to um, uh, how uh, what Trump's reaction is. Because, look, this is kind of, this is at least part of the reason why Trump still has some support. I mean, maybe not at this point. I think all of his support right now are just, I mean, it has to be people that are just full of hatred of others. Um, but at least... Part of the reason why why Trump was able to gain traction, at least in 2016, at least part of the reason, is because he is somewhat honest about his own feelings about things. Not honest about the facts, not honest about what he's going to do for people, but honest about how he feels, because it's kind of hard for him to hide um, how he feels about anything. So, <laughs> in comparison to what you just saw uh, from Justin Trudeau and how he reacted to this, uh, here is Trump's response to the uh, that video clip. Well, he's too fast. Do you think that Germany is too naive? And honestly, with Trudeau, he's a nice guy. I, I find him to be a very nice guy. But, you know, the truth is that uh, I called him out on the fact that he's not paying 2%. And I guess he's not very happy about it. I mean, you were there. A couple of you were there. And uh, he's not paying 2%. And he should be paying 2%. It's Canada. They have money. And they should be paying 2%. So I called him out on that, and I'm sure he wasn't happy about it, but that's the way it is. Look, I'm representing the U.S., and he should be paying more than he's paying, and he understands it. So I can imagine I can imagine he's not that happy, but that's the way it is. All right, so look. Donald Trump, I think, is the worst leader that America has had in at least modern history, if not ever. But here... This is, again, part of the reason why he was able to gain some support back in 2016. He's actually being honest here. Trump is being honest about how he feels, calling Trudeau two-faced. And then he goes on to, to what bothers him, which is the 2% the he keeps, he keeps uh, harping on here, which I'll get to in a minute. 
The Two Face thing, though, I just want to go off on this for a minute because I saw some funny reactions to this. Um, this is where the comedians came in. So <laughs> here's Gareth Reynolds uh, tweeting out I don't often agree with Trump, but Trudeau is technically two faced with, you know, this image. And then uh, Jess Dweck here uh, saying, Look, we already knew Justin Trudeau had a dark side. All right. A lot of comedy uh, coming out of that two faced uh, remark. But. Trump here focused on this 2%. Canada is not paying 2%. 2%. I'm going to 2%. Okay, so <laughs> what is this about? This is about Canada's contributions to NATO. Now, the reality is Canada has actually increased their contributions to NATO. But this is not a good thing. So the contributions are not to where Trump wants them to be, but they have increased them. But this idea that they should be increased at all is actually not the way to, the, not the correct way to look at this. The actual issue here is that Canada is already paying too much, as is everyone, because NATO itself is the problem. So there's a great piece in Common Dreams by co-founder of uh, Code Pink, Medea Benjamin, and uh, she says this here. In an age where people around the world want to avoid war and to focus instead on the climate chaos that threatens future life on Earth, NATO is an anachronism. It accounts for about three quarters of military spending and weapons dealing around the globe. Instead of preventing war, it promotes militarism, exacerbates global tensions, and makes war more likely. This Cold War relic shouldn't be reconfigured to maintain U.S. domination in Europe or to mobilize against Russia or China or to launch new wars in space. It should not be expanded but disbanded. Seventy years of militarism is more than enough. So... This is how I feel about this. NATO is a relic, and this continued, uh, I mean, this push to increase spending is not the direction that we should be going, which is, again, why it's so important to have, you know, potential world leaders like a Bernie Sanders or a Jeremy Corbyn that would reassess all of this, reassess how, uh, how these world powers actually um, approach serious issues, or I should say, how they um how they reorder issues. So climate change right now is the most important issue facing the world. If you have a Bernie Sanders and a Jeremy Corbyn leading the world, leading the charge on that, then the priorities globally will be shifted in favor of some actual data, some actual facts, and against you know a constant war. Now, um, ultimately though, let's just I just want to share this headline here. What is the ultimate impact of all this gossip? As Business Insider uh, put out here, Trump cuts NATO summit trip short after world leaders appear to mock him in video. So the sad boy went home, or I guess he's planning to go home early. <laughs> so uh, even though, you know, Trump can be honest about his own feelings at times, again, not honest about policy, not honest about facts, just honest about his own feelings, um, even though he can be honest about that, he's still a child. So he's not able to work through this, and maybe he feels uncomfortable and needs to leave now, like a sad little baby. But that's what we've come to expect from uh, Donald Trump.